In the name of Allah, the merciful, the Lord of the universe who I worship, I pray that he will bless us all and that he will bless our setting that we have while we study the prophetic traits. I'm your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. I'm happy to have you with me again and I'm welcoming you to a new episode, hoping that you are in your living room enjoying yourself and introducing yourself to the life of the greatest man. I'm trying to uncover a little sides of what we normally do not hear about the Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad. In our episode today, I'd like to see what kind of man he was as a friend, as a companion, as an associate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an al-Kareem addressed that the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he migrated from Mecca to Medina and he had to spend three days in the cave with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he mentioned that bond of friendship. And it really actually started way before that incident of the cave. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I would like to migrate as all the other people of the city of Mecca did. The Prophet, peace be upon him, told him, Wait, I would like you to be with me. as suhbah to suhbah Companionship, companionship, ya Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr waited and stayed. When it was time to depart, they secretly sneaked out of Mecca, hid in the cave, or Hira, and stayed in there, the cave of Hira, for three days. Look at the friendship that Abu Bakr had with the Prophet and the Prophet had with Abu Bakr. Prior to entering into the cave, Abu Bakr turns to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he says, Wait, O Prophet of Allah, Wait. Wait for what? Wait for me to see that everything is safe inside. Abu Bakr enters, makes sure that everything is safe. He notices there is a hole in the wall. In fear that there might be something that can harm the Prophet, peace be upon him, a scorpion, a snake, anything, a spider, so he called in the Prophet and he sat and covered that hole with his foot. He stretched his foot to cover the hole. And the Prophet put his head on the lap of Abu Bakr and slept. He was tired and napped. And soon enough, Abu Bakr was bit by a scorpion. And that scorpion continued to bite and bite and bite. And the pain was enormous to where he started to cry but did not want to say anything or make any kind of noise or voice. He did not want the Prophet, peace be upon him, to be disturbed within his nap. He did not want to take away the time of rest from the Prophet. That's because the Prophet, peace be upon him, was such a friend. Then Abu Bakr start crying and his st tears start dripping and they fell on the cheeks of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He felt the tear, opened his eyes. Anything wrong, ya Abu Bakr? 
have you been bit? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, I have. Why did you not wake me up when you, did, when, when you got bit? I did not want to disturb your rest, Ya Rasulullah. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes prayers, runs his hands over the foot of Abu Bakr, and he's cured. Look at that friendship. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala speaks about it in the Quran and he says illa tansuru faqad nasarahu Allah in the kharajahu alladhina kafaru thaniyatnayn idh huma fil ghari idh yaqulu li sahibihi la tahzan la tahzan inna Allah ma'ana If you do not give him victory, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him victory. When he was in the cave with his friend, and he's telling his friend, do not fear. Do not feel saddened, for Allah is with us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges that friendship. And tells that if you do not give him victory, then he can do it on his own. Because Abu Bakr al-Siddiq had said, while they were in there, O oh, Rasulullah, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if one of them was to look below his feet, they would have seen us. But the Prophet answered, he said, what do you think of two? Allah is their third. There's a very beautiful story I'd like to share with you, brothers and sisters out there. A story of Abu Bakr and Umar. They had a conflict as all friends might have at times. And they argued. Abu Bakr seemed to be wrong or felt that he has done Umar wrong. So he said, forgive me, my brother. But Umar said, no, I will not forgive you. You have hurt my feelings. And for that, I'm not going to forgive you. Abu Bakr, Scared, terrified that he might die and some Muslim out there is upset at him. So he rushed to the Prophet, peace be upon him. He rushed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, trying to complain and find some kind of peace. Omar, when he saw Abu Bakr take off, he knew that he was going to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he rushed after him because he did not want the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to know about the incident and to know that he did not forgive when he had the chance. But he was a little late and Abu Bakr was already sitting next to the Prophet peace be upon him and the Prophet's face has changed. He was upset and he looked at Umar and he said to Umar, look at the true friendship that he shared with others. He looked at Umar and he said, leave me and my friend alone. Leave me and my friend alone. Normal human being. The Prophet used to give his ceremony on Friday and he used to lean on a trunk of a palm tree. And then the number of people increased so they made steps for him, which we call mimbar. Three steps where he can climb and address the people where they can get to see him. That first Friday after they made the mimbar for him, he stood up to give his speech. While he's standing, everybody started to hear something crying. And it's just getting louder and louder. It was that palm tree. That palm tree was crying because it has lost the prophet from leaning on it. It was honored to have the prophet, peace be upon him, lean on that palm tree. And it could not stop crying. So the prophet came down of the mimbar, put the tree between his arms, the trunk of the tree between his arms, and whispers to the tree, would it please you to be my tree in heaven? It calmed 
and silent. It felt the joy. It was promised that it will be with its friend, the prophet, peace be upon him. One of the companions, my brothers and sisters out there that are watching, came to the prophet and he said, O messenger of Allah, last night I could not sleep. Why could you not sleep? He said, I was thinking that when we all pass away, and by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we go to Jannah, we go to heaven. You will be at the upper levels of heaven, and I'm not. And I felt saddened that I will not be with you. I will not share the place with you. I will not be your neighbor. The prophet said, the person is with whom he loves. He comforted him. Because he knew he loved him. Heaven with all of his joys and pleasures to the man at that moment were, was irrelevant. Were irrelevant. Because he wanted to be with the prophet peace be upon him. Each day when the prophet used to walk out of his home to go to the marketplace he would find thorns and bothering objects on his way. One of the days, he walks out, those thorns and disturbing objects were not there. So he wondered why. The person that was doing that was sick. It is said it was a Jew that was his neighbor. And some say it was not, but it was somebody that was bothering the prophet. And they said he was sick. He took himself and went to visit him to make sure that he is okay. The man said, how did you know that I was sick? He said, I missed the thorns and the bothering objects that you used to put on my path. He didn't show any kind of grudge. He didn't carry within his heart hatred. And in fact, those objects were a sign that the man was okay and healthy. The prophet carried love even for those who are distant from him. Do you carry love for your own family? Do you have a friend that you care for as the prophet cared for his friends, especially Abu Bakr? Coming to the end of this episode, I thank you in being with us today and hope to see you in our upcoming episode of Prophetic Traits. I'm your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. I thank you for being with us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.